when you breathe that air out there, it's not about being a Democrat. It's not about being a Republican. It crosses that. It transcends all of that. It's about human beings breathing the same air that is making all of us sick. I'm Tracy Kunz. My husband's name is Michael Roberts, and together we are the Louisiana Bike Keepers. Our house is on one of the finger canals off of Bayou Barataria. 150 miles northwest of where the oil rig exploded. Our fishing grounds are totally closed down, so all the income from that is gone. So you have a choice. You can not make any money because you can't go fishing, or you can go out on the cleanup of the oil spill, but you're risking your health and safety. It's really, really stressful. These men on the bayou are used to taking care of their families. Uh, we've been here since about 8.30. Try to see if we can get some work since we can't trump. Yeah. When I first heard about the oil spill, my thought was they finally did it. They, this is the big one. They have finally finished us off. Because for 40 years, or since I've been aware of it, that I've been on these waters out here, I have watched them do nothing but damage. That's damage, right. damage, damage. So there's a little heavier oil right there, that little white splotch. It's all the way up here now and behind the house. I don't know why it didn't occur to me that it could be this far up, but all the birds are gone. Where did the birds go? Well, if they have enough sense to leave, you really need to think about that. And the night that they did the first burn, the whole community filled up with the smell of crude oil. We were outside at one o'clock in the morning, the neighbors had come out and it, just the smell was horrible. When they're burning that stuff, they can't control where that's going. If it was like that here, I can just only imagine what it must be like for the fishermen and the other workers. I mean, BP keeps saying it's nothing to worry about. They're never gonna be exposed to any of this stuff. And they're not gonna come in contact with it. And if they are, they'll make sure they have 40-hour hazmat training and the proper protection. But the reality is something entirely different. All these guys are having sinus problems. Dripping sinuses, scratchy throats, that kind of stuff. And this cough that the guys are calling the BP cough, because nobody really knows what it is, but everybody's got it. <coughs> That's the last of the respirators and cartridges that we've been distributing them to fishermen. Yeah. You can see the workers are not protected and that they are working in oil. And that is unconscionable. But they, they spray and dispersing everywhere. <coughs> What's that? They spray and that dispersing everywhere. Yeah, they squirt the marsh with it. Trying to wash it off the marsh and everything, but I can't Trying to wash the marsh. What's a dispersing? What do you like? It just vanishes, it goes right, away, it's gone, gone forever? Yeah. Baloney. No. What it changes it changes the molecular structure of it so it's not so obvious anymore. That's, That's right. what a dispersant does. And they want you to believe that it's gone. That it's right? disappeared. That's right. It didn't go anywhere. They said they couldn't take where the oil was coming from. So when the sun heats the water up to a certain temperature, the oil bubbles up off the bottom and comes to the top. And how you feel right now? I got migraine headaches. They need a community health care center in this community. There's not, there's a doctor's office if you have um, medical insurance, <laughs> which most of the fishermen do not have because you just can't afford it. The children who are on Medicaid down here um, can't go to that doctor's office because they don't accept the community care that most of the children are on. The normal thing for kids when they get out of school in this community is to go trawling with their fathers. My little grandson, Scotty Boy, has been going trawling since he was in diapers. I mean, that's all Scott's ever wanted to do. So when I hear Tony Hayward say he wants his life back. Yeah. Do you have enough decibels back in 30 cents? Yeah. It's got to be on every little piece there is.
I want my time back with my grandchildren. I want to know that then when they walk out the door, that air that they're breathing is not going to make them sick down the road. I want to be able to see them swimming in that bayou, jumping off of the boat and swimming around out there again. I think that it's real hard for people to understand the magnitude of the problem. It's not just in the Gulf anymore.